at this point we've got a home screen and we've got a, an about screen. Hopefully you figured out how to do this, which is the nav bar. And um, highlighting, of course, the about button. And since we've got a nav bar, we don't we no longer need that back button. That would be way too redundant. A back button plus a nav bar. So if you didn't get this done, I'll put my code at the end of the day in. But briefly, what I did was I copied the code from the first section to the second section. I copied the nav bar code. That code that worked on the home section, all of that nav code, I copied that as is into the header section of the about block. And then uh, I changed here, I moved the class from home to about, the active and persist classes. I moved them over to about because that's the one that should be active and persisting, the about button. And because I no longer needed a, that back button, that loan back button, a couple of ways to do it. We had data add back button true. Well, I set it to false, and it takes it away. Now the default is false. So if you want to save a few bytes, just remove that completely. Don't even bother mentioning the back button there, and it's set to false. If you want to be obvious about it, I have it true, I have it false. That created the nav bar on the about screen. Just a little copy and paste and a little changing. But if it worked, then it was just it just came through pretty easily. What I want to do as we get close to the end of the day is, well, we've got a button called contact. It might be nice if there were an actual section called contact for this to work. Again, here's the copy and paste aspect of it. I've got a couple of sections that already work pretty well. An about section, a contact section, why not copy that section in its totality? paste it, and edit it a little bit to create that contact page. And then in the contact, we'll explore some of the jQuery mobile contact form elements. So first, I need to create a new section for the contact screen. So I'm going to copy lines 38 to 63 or so. If yours don't line up, I'm just trying to copy section to section because that's a complete section. The section is delineated, there's a header, there's a footer, there's a main content. I'm going to copy that and paste it after itself. So I've got a brand new exact copy of section. I then need to change the ID number one. Uh, I'll put some different text on the H1 contact, for example. I'll fix my nav bar so that now contact is active and persistent. Uh, inside the article, I'll put here, contact us. And if you want to, you can change the footer. So we've got a complete section. We just need to fine tune it. My new section's ID. Oh, and if you want to change the theme, that's fine. I'll put it back to A. There's no C. We have not defined C. It'll just go back to A but that definitely needs the idea of contact because my nav bar here has pound contact. If I called it pound contact us, it better be called id contact us there or else the link won't work. Uh, data add back button false. You can leave that alone or just take it out to save yourself some bytes there. About screen contact. Screen. My nav bar, I need to move, I need to cut and paste or move my uh, class down to contact. And remember the trick in uh, Notepad++ that if you select a block of code, you can simply drag and drop it. Instead of cut and paste, select, drag and drop. So now my contact button is the persistent one. In the main 
article. Uh, we can write send us an email. And then the footer, I don't know, I'll just write something like uh, uh, Victor Apps LLC. Just some other content down on the footer. We can, via JavaScript, make that dynamic in that that changes depending on various factors, user input or other triggers that will automatically write new content to that footer down there. We're not at that point yet, so I'm just uh, writing some non-dynamic, some static content, and later on I can write dynamic content via JavaScript. So I've got my uh, jQuery mobile home screen, about screen, contact screen. All of these should work now. I should be able to go from screen to screen if all my IDs and hrefs are intact. Okay, so what I want to do for the contact screen is to have a, uh, a contact form. We've um, used forms a little bit previously when we created that um, random name picker. Uh, here we will use some form tags for a real kind of contact form. It won't, it won't do anything yet because the contact form needs to be further programmed to, uh, for input. But if we go look at the documentation on jQuery Mobile, if you go find on the sidebar, if you find text input widget. We have table widget, tabs widget. Widgets are these, um, you know, these little elements, these building blocks to create a, an app, all of the common tools of an app. We will need text input widget. <coughs> text inputs and text areas are coded with standard HTML, then enhanced by jQuery Mobile to make them more attractive and usable on mobile devices. So we're going to have something like this with a little text, a little box. That's the, that's the same if you view source. That's the same form, label, and input that we've dealt with before. It really has no special. It really has no special extra jQuery mobile markup. It's smart enough to know if you've got a form and a label and an input, make it look like this. This one glows when you click it to highlight it. The text automatically is on its own line. Remember, on the random name picker, the label text is on the left, and the input box is on the right. Here, it automatically stacks it. We can make a search input. We don't need it at the moment, but view source tells us that the way this works is with a type of search. And, e and even that is not really jQuery mobile. That's still just HTML, HTML5, actually. What else? Text area. So this is a block where you can write more than just one sentence. We saw numbers, type of number, do dates. Date doesn't look very good on a 
on a web browser, but when it's on an actual mobile device, a little uh, calendar will pop up to let you choose dates. Or is that one month? Weeks. Okay, so what we want to do is a little input um, form in our article for the contact screen, then we need to start off with the form tag. So on mine it's on line 82. I need the form tag pair. I will need a label which has a pair and then an input. Label has uh, the for attribute. Input has the name attribute. And both of those should be the same. So we're saying that this label is for that input. On the label, uh, we'll call this name. So our label for name will be, um, and we'll do in name, in name. If the label is name, I wouldn't call the the name or the for name because then it's a it's the reserved word. type of text, placeholder, A little bit of text uh, on the placeholder that explains what the um, what the person should write there. So my result is I'm starting to build something here. Name with a box. It automatically highlights when you click on it. That's user experience as well. Which item am I typing into? Well, a simple little glow. That's good user interface design there. That glow is showing the user I'm in this box. That happens automatically. I didn't have to write any specific jQuery mobile code. It just knows what to do with the right tags. I'm going to ask for the person's name, email, and their message, let's say. The next input field will be their email. It'll be the same thing. I need a label. And some input. This is for in email. And the input has a name of in input or in uh, email. Type is email. Placeholder, some example e uh, email address. So I'm just building a couple of input fields. Uh, jQuery Mobile takes care of the, the part about uh, making it look nice.
We can type anything on the name, on the email. I can type anything, but then when I try to input it, it'll give me a little feedback that that is not correct. Oh, and I hover over it, and it also pops up to tell me, please enter an email address. So this type of input uh, box is set to email, and therefore it will only accept email. So there's a little bit of data validation built in to using the right type. And technically, that's just the HTML5 attribute of email, not jQuery mobile. As soon as I type a pattern that looks like an email, then it will accept it. On the documentation of uh, jQuery Mobile, I can further see that I, I can have a type of password input field where someone types something and it'll be hidden. Viewing source is simply having type password. Autocomplete off for more security so that the password automatically is not uh, filled in, perhaps. You have a way to do a file upload. That one is of type file. I have then the text area. I want to do this one where it's a, I'm asking for their name, their email, and then their message. This would work better with something that is multiple lines. This one has a specific attribute as well. This one's a little different. It's not a uh, type of something. It's text area. And this is different syntax. Text area needs a name, just like for needs a name, but it's an opening and a closing text area tag. It's different than every than these other input fields we've dealt with. This is still a holdover from like, HTML 1.0. So we need text area tags. If we go back to our code here, we're going to need, still need the label. So a new label for something uh, in message. And um, closing label, let's say message. And then we need text area tag with an opening and a closing, it needs the name so that it can be identified by, by the label in message. And I think you can also write a placeholder here. You can write whatever you want in the placeholder. the name and the email, the message. Placeholder text. And we need the uh, clear button and the and the submit button. Um, so this this is not really new. We looked at this when we did the uh, random name picker. But 
visually it's very different because of jQuery Mobile. I'm about to add an input type button for send and an input type reset for reset. And then I can add the data icons to those to give me an icon to my buttons. So just confirming here. Um, yeah, so we can just do a button as before. This one doesn't need a label, uh, so it'll be input type. We can do either submit or generic button. I guess we'll do just submit. And um, this one needs a value send. Type reset. Put type reset value clear or cancel or whatever you'd like. This is two separate inputs in the same line. I want to have the send button and the reset button. Send and clear, but we can use some jQuery mobile to spruce these up. I know they're a little plain, they look like plain buttons. Remember, we can have data dash icon. An icon for send. Um, there's like a check mark. It's like a check mark. Uh, that we could use, I think it's called check. Yeah, that's send check mark. And for clear, we've got one data icon called the delete. This will do a little X. So this should spruce up the, uh, the plain old buttons. Right there, a couple of icons. What I would also like, uh, I don't like that they take up their own space. Each one is on its own line. It might be nicer that they're on the same line for buttons in jQuery. Uh, there is another attribute that we can add that will keep the, the, the buttons on one line, that will keep the buttons, that will prevent the buttons from acting like block level elements. Um, if you know, if you took the other classes, you might know about block level elements, inline level elements. But basically, these are block level elements at the moment in that they take up a whole block. They want to grow to take up as much space as they can and push the other ones away. So clear goes to its own block even though they're on the same line here. We can override that and make them inline level so that send and clear appear on the same line. Well, it's going to be an attribute to the buttons. It's going to be data-inline equals true. Add that to both of them, and what will happen is that both of those buttons will do two things. They will stay on one line, and also, they will only be as big as necessary. Right now, they stretch out to fill the whole area. But here, with inline, 
they will only be as, be as big as the text inside of them, and they should stay on one line. So add that to both. And go one line. So all of this up to this point is basic HTML for a, for a form. And then the data icon and the data inline are jQuery and mobile. This won't do anything yet. That's not been programmed, and that's more than we can do at the moment. But so far, here is my project. I haven't put in any uh, real content yet, but I have a home screen, about screen, contact, I, I put this in, that looks pretty good. Again, if you want to test this in the Chrome browser and load up the device emulators, it will look even better. try to look a little bit more accurate like in a device well, that's cool I put in some gibberish inside the email click send and then it popped up there to tell me please include an at in the email address. So it recognized it wasn't an email. What happens over on the iPhone? It might be a generic kind of message. It might not be fully accurate. We have to test that on a real iPhone or Android. And here, just very quickly, I put input type date. It needs a label and everything else, but I put input type date, and the browser is trying to display as if it would display on a real device, where I, I get a little date picker pop-up. It's off-center for some reason. But on a real device, when we get to that point, you will get a little calendar there. So you get a calendar. You'll be able to go through all the months, pick a date, and it'll fill it in for you. We're not at that point yet, and you can explore that on your own, but that's the input type of date. All right, so as, as we wind down for the day, there's still plenty more that we can do. We're going to go through the jQuery mobile website. Uh, several different ways. We're not going to go through it screen by screen. You might want to do it yourself. Uh, it is pretty interesting. It's pretty self-contained. It's all in there. We're going to be referencing the documentation often. How does this work? How do I do that? We're going to start to build our app. Remember the example app? We're going to build that example app based on jQuery Mobile. The whole point of jQuery Mobile, it's, it's a framework. It's a starting point. It's not the only one out there, though. There are these other ones like Sencha, Ionic, um, Onsen. There's a bunch of them out there that are trying to solve this problem. How do I quickly create a mobile friendly interface? Instead of programming it from scratch, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, I can use Onsen and write the proper Onsen specific code to activate you know, some sort of interface. Intel has their own version of it. I forget what it's called. I think it's Intel XDK or something. 
they have their own version to create their own quick interface based on HTML, but based on <coughs> Intel's JavaScript and CSS, you can create an interface. There's plenty of ways to do it. We're learning jQuery Mobile. It's one of the older and popular ones. And uh, we can then couple this later on next month with Cordova. We can use other things like Angular and get more complex with Node.js and such. But the point of this is to create our interface, our basically our content and presentation layers. And then we will uh, use these pieces to build the app. And we wrote it all by hand at the moment, but we will see yet another kind of shortcut when we come back on Thursday. But uh, we're running up and running pretty quick. We had the basic intros in the first two weeks, and here's where we are today on three hours of instruction on this uh, fifth day. We still have more to do, of course. Any general questions at this point? Oh, one thing here. Uh, we had the animation for go to about screen, but we never programmed an animation for the nav bar, so they all get the default basic fade animation. If you wanted these to animate in a better way, you would have to add data transition to to those elements. Right, the home button, about button, and contact button. All three of them would need a uh, a data transition. At this point, since we already copied and pasted three times, we might have to do it manually. But if we had remembered that early on and added it to our original nav, and then we copied it three times, it'd be done. And here I'd have to do nine little changes. Right, three here, three on the first screen, three on the second screen, three on the third screen. Or as we get more complex, we could do something cool like this, where I can use the replace feature of Notepad++ to find a particular Uh, string find and replace wherever there is this string in my code and it's there at least twice replace it with this which has additionally the data transition it won't fully work because there are the examples where the data icon has data icon home has the class of active persist, so it gets in the way right there. He didn't do that one because the string is different, home than class, so didn't do it. I guess it doesn't matter because it's the one that's active, so we don't even click on it. Let me show that trick one more time. So I want to replace all instances of about, right now it's got the basic fade animation. My trick would be to select some portion of the string that is unique that I will then replace. If I select data icon info about, go up to search replace, control H. It'll say, okay, we're going to replace data icon info with data icon info and data transition. So it'll do it on the two screens, saving me the time. And then I would do the same thing on the about uh, and the contact, replace all. So it did it on that first instance, and it did it on the third instance because they all follow that pattern. This find and replace is very pow very powerful, especially as we get more complex.
Okay, so we're going to wrap up. Uh, I'm going to put a copy of my code in the network folder. We'll do a little lab time until 9.30. I'll upload the videos if you'd like. That's it for the moment. When we come back, we're going to uh, start to further develop this app based on the example and um, get pretty good at jQuery Mobile.